Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's headlines, with just one week before the Israeli parliamentary election, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls on his supporters to vote. The United Arab List is expected to become Israel's third strongest party. Arab League Secretary General Nabil El Arvi calls for the immediate creation of a multinational force to fight terrorism and the groups behind it. With just one week before the Israeli parliamentary election, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu toured Jerusalem's Machne Yehuda market, which has traditionally been a bastion of Netanyahu's Likud support. <laughs> The press was not invited to cover the tour and was informed about it only after. Political experts ascribe that decision to concerns with the Likud about Netanyahu declining popularity. According to reports, there has been low turnout for Likud campaign events, the ejection among the Likud grassroots activists and in-depth polls that indicate the governing party is weaker than might otherwise appear. Meanwhile, the expected surprise of the upcoming election, which was a political sideshow for much of the past six decades, Israel's Arab minority is hoping to gain political muscle after the next week's parliamentary election, with four Arab parties uniting under one banner for the first time. Surveys show the joint Arab list could finish in third place and potentially become a new force in governing coalition building in a country where no party has ever won an outright majority in parliament. Israeli Arabs believe they are treated as second-class citizens and see the newfound political unity as an important step and a tool to fight against discrimination. هاي بتكون لحظة تاريخية إذا الجماهير العربية بتخرج وبتصوت لهي القائمة أو بتعطيها 15 مقعد وأكثر لأنه ممكن إنه مرة من المرات يكون الجماهير العربية لها تأثير قوي جدا في البرلمان على القوانين على الميزانيات على كل مناحي الحياة في الدول هنا اللي بتخص المواطن العرب هي السبب الوحيد اللي راح أنتخب هاي المرة هو توحد الأحزاب جميعا وكمان مرة بدون ما الواحد يعلق عليهن أمال كبيرة أو مسؤوليات ضخمة أو يعني إيش اللي فوق طاقة الطاقة اللي يتحملوها مجرد إنه تلفوا فبيستاهلوا الصوت بهاي الحلبة كفاية إنه يكونوا متوحدين حتى يحصلوا أحسن النتائج. Arab parties have never been included in any Israeli government, nor have they sought membership. That is unlikely to change now, but the joint Arab list could still have a big role to play after the ballots are counted. In Israel's parliamentary election system, voters choose a party rather than an individual candidate, and the head of the party with the most political allies will usually win a presidential mandate to form the coalition government. Leader of the Arab joint list, Ayman Ude, has not ruled out the possibility of backing Itzhak Herzog, whose Zionist Union is running neck and neck with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud. In such a tight race, every seat in a 120-member Knesset is crucial. نحن اليوم نقدم نموذجا مغايرا. نموذجا مخالفا نحن توحدنا وجمعنا التناقضات الثانوية في مواجهة التناقض الرئيسي عندما نكون في القرى غير المعترف بها بالنقب 
نحن لا نسأل الناس عن مواقفهم السياسية لا توجد لهم لا كهرباء ولا ماء عندما نكون في أم الفحم لا نسأله إذا صوت للحركة السامية أو للجبهة أو للتجمع كلهم مهددون من ليبرمان In a possible political twist, should Herzog and Netanyahu opt to form a united coalition, Uda is likely to become the head of the opposition, which would be the first time in Israel's history that an Arab party assumes the role. Uda is not well known outside the Arab community, but he drew mainstream attention during a televised election debate in which he kept his cool when chairman of the right-wing Israel Beitenu party Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman accused him of wanting to destroy Israel from within by representing terror organizations. Arab citizens make up about 15% of eligible voters, which means they have an electoral potential of 18 seats. Some of them vote for non-Arab parties. Polls show the joint Arab list is set to win 15 seats, up from the 11 its members now hold separately. And now to the ongoing battle against the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, a meeting between Arab League foreign ministers started last night with various regional issues on the agenda. The two-day meeting, presided over by Jordanian Foreign Minister Nasser Judah, called for the creation of a regional force to combat Islamists as countries face a growing threat from the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Speaking at the opening session of the Arab League meeting of foreign ministers, Secretary General Nabil El Arbi called for the immediate creation of a multi national force to fight terrorism and the groups behind it. It was not immediately clear which countries would join such a force, or where or when it would be created. In a sign of renewed hostility between the Western-backed Palestinian Authority and the Islamist Hamas, a senior Palestinian defense official said that the Palestinian Authority's security forces arrested over 100 Hamas members in the past two weeks. The extensive arrests are being carried out at the time even as Israel continued to hold the Palestinian Authority's tax funds for the third consecutive month. The funding freeze is a punitive measure, first initiated after the Palestinian government signed the Rome Statute and applied for membership in the International Criminal Court at The Hague. The tax funds are used by the Palestinian Authority to pay salaries for its employees, both civil and military. The Palestinian official said the wave of arrests some six to seven Hamas members per night was undertaken in a bid to clamp down on the Gaza-based international recognized terror group after warning lights began flashing in Ramallah. He added that the step was also a punitive measure against Hamas after it arrested a senior Fatah member in Gaza. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.